Hey there, everybody. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich. I'm the channel host. And today we're going to talk about the top five applications that I'm using on my desktop on a regular basis that feed into my drone business. So let's hop right into it. And we're going to talk about the number one uh, application that I've been using on my Mac Studio uh, over these last couple of months. And some things have changed around for me because Final Cut Pro was not my most used application just several months ago. Final Cut Pro has always been part of our business for doing um, time-lapse videos and standard videos for the construction sites that we're documenting. But with all of the changes and the things that my clients have requested, uh, realtors, the broker, and uh, the builders as well, they're looking to focus more on video side of things than just the still. So interestingly enough, as I've been working over the past couple weeks, I've been keeping track of what applications, what programs I'm using regularly with, let's take a look up here under system settings and screen time. So there is an application on Mac, if you don't know about it, called screen time. And right now we're going to go to Rich's Mac studio today. We're just starting the day out. But it shows me what's been used the most so far this morning. So all apps, you know, the computer's been up for an hour and 15 minutes. Um, Google Chrome, because I'm doing some research and setup for this. And then there's Final Cut, there's Photoshop, there's Kino. So as I've been doing my work over the past couple of weeks, I'm always checking at the end of the day to see what's coming up on screen time the most. And so Final Cut has been one of the heavy hitters. So this is used for doing video editing for our customers, um, if you can imagine, or you know, if you didn't know what Final Cut was. By the way, if you're a Windows user, uh, equivalent stuff, you've got um, DaVinci Resolve out there for video. Um, you've got Adobe's entire suite for their video setups as well. We happen to be using Final Cut Pro here. <laughs> So right along with Final Cut Pro, we're going to group these kind of together here, is Kino, which we also saw pop up. Whoop. Um, my apologies. I've got this one pre-set up for you. And uh, let's go to it. So Kino is a video management platform that I've been using for a couple of years now. It helps keep me organized when I'm putting together videos for both YouTube, my clients, and my class sites like Teachable and Udemy. So this is where all the organizational boring stuff goes on behind the scenes as we're assembling our Final Cut projects. And so if you can't tell, we have uh, some folders with some videos in them. If you're interested in managing your workflow better, you might want to check out Kino. I do know that they were recently bought out. I've had a lot of people ask, are they still supporting it? Or are they still selling it? To my knowledge, Kino is still available and still supported, although it sounds like maybe the support calls are, um, are not getting responded to as quickly as they should. So I'm going to go ahead and quit Kino here. And there we are back in uh, Final Cut. But we are going to pull up a weird screen here for a moment. This screen's going to throw you off a little bit um, because it's something we're actively doing. Right now, I'm recording a video for you. And I utilize OBS Studio to do screen sharing videos. So if you've ever watched one of my classes or any of our other videos here on YouTube and you see me on screen, um, this is the program that we're using to do the recording. So we're not going to shut this one off. And by the way, OBS is an open source platform uh, for Windows and Mac. And you can download it and start using it today for free. It's a very, very powerful um, streaming platform and also video recording platform if you're doing tutorials. So let's go ahead and minimize Final Cut as well. And the next thing that we're going to jump down to is Photoshop and Lightroom. So I've got what I think is going to be the thumbnail for this video for you. And I was putting this together earlier this morning and I was utilizing Photoshop saying, yeah, look at that. Every time we do thumbnails, we're utilizing Photoshop. Now, in addition to Photoshop, we are also using Adobe's Lightroom Classic right down here on the screen. And we don't need to dive deep into Adobe's Lightroom Classic right now. I just want to let you know I'm treating this as a package. Now, normally I'm utilizing Lightroom Classic a lot more than Photoshop. I just happen to be working on Photoshop this morning, but 
So there we go. Our primary photo editing is Photoshop and Lightroom put together. So if you can't tell already, this is going to be more than a top five because we're bundling a couple of things together. The next desktop application we're going to talk about is QGIS. And if you see the smirk on my face, it's because I skipped over some things in the recording and I was laughing at myself. So I'm still composing myself. But I'm so the next application here is QGIS. This is a geographical information system. It is also open source, just like uh, OBS was open source. So I'm going to keep the unavailable layers. But one of the things that we have now been using QGIS for is planning our flights for our client job locations and also cataloging our flights. So it's gone beyond just some of the flight planning that we're doing for our projects. And now we're actually utilizing this to catalog a lot of steps that go into documenting these larger areas um, where we're monitoring construction. So QGIS does have a bit of a learning curve. It is open source. And if you are interested in either documenting some of your drone flights or pre-planning flights so that you can actually export KML files from QGIS and import them to your favorite flight apps. A lot of flight apps will take the QGIS uh, KML files or other shape files as well. The same uh, turning things around on their heads. So some of the applications that you might use on your iPhone or Android for autonomous flight control, um, what you set up in those applications can also be imported back into QGIS as well. So this has become a very powerful tool for us and we have been using it on all of our new projects here in 2022. So we adopted this early 2022 and it has just grown exponentially with us as far as planning out the larger job sites. So you can uh, you can lay out maps and uh, models on this. So this is our solstice project and we're not gonna do a deep dive on this, but we do have access. Let's scroll all the way down. And I'm just going to turn on, there's ESRI's topo map. So you can see here, we've dropped the GeoTIFF right in here, giving ourselves kind of a point of reference as to what's around us. We can also utilize maps like the Google hybrid maps. And now we see our project area, our GeoTIFF, um, in the same space as the actual Google hybrid map that's available to us. So if you'd like to plan and catalog your flights for your clients, I would strongly suggest looking into QGIS. Next up in our list of desktop applications, I don't know if I should call this a desktop application, this feels kind of weird, but it does reside on my Mac Studio, and that is WebODM. So WebODM is an application that allows us to do two-dimensional and three-dimensional modeling. Let's go ahead and pull up uh, the Ironstone Way project here. Let's take a look at that mapped area just for a moment. And um, so we're looking at a two-dimensional map right now in WebODM. If I go back to my dashboard here, we could even take a look at our most recent solstice. So let's take a look at a 3D model here. So there is the point cloud. So this is running on my desktop, but it does use a web browser interface. Currently we're using Chrome. Here I can upload our flights from our client locations where we're doing um, ortho mosaics, where we're doing photogrammetry. So two dimensional and three dimensional modeling. And this one I used to consider one of my more heavily used applications. But like I said, as we've been making a shift more toward the video side at our clients requests, we haven't seen as much time on WebODM or Metashape for that matter. So that is the one other desktop application that is regularly used, just not used as much as it used to be. And here we are, we're in the uh, Metashape interface. And I'm just gonna take a look at that first one, which is Solstice, which I actually added to this recently because I was just wanting to see some of the three dimensionality of this project site. So if we actually roll this down and I've also got it um, adding in, you can see the Google Earth map around us here um, because I had actually turned the maps on. So we're still using Metashape along with WebODM for when we're taking a look at our models and maps. Usually what will happen is I'll run it through WebODM really quickly. I'll just do a low resolution setting to see how things are looking. And then if I need to do a higher resolution setup for our geotiffs, 
I can always bounce over to MetaShape Pro as well. So there you have it, everybody. Those are the top applications, the most used applications here at uh, AZ Drone. It is kind of weird seeing things change that we're moving toward the video. So we've got the Final Cut, we've got Kino, we've got OBS recording this. Um, we're utilizing QGIS, we're still using WebODM, and we're still using MetaShape. And of course, are there other applications that we use regularly on this computer? Absolutely, but I wanted to talk specifically about software that feeds into my drone business that's used hand in hand for processing the data and the images that we collect with our drones while we're out in the field. All right, everyone, I hope that this one was informative. If you have questions about other software applications that you might be using on your desktop for your drone business, be sure to make a comment down below. If you've got any questions, make comments as well. Also, be sure to like and subscribe as well. It's always appreciated. All right, everybody, we'll see you on the next recording, and I hope you have a great week.